This is the new BMW 8 Series. Is it simply the successor to the 6 Series or the spiritual heir of the ultra cool E31? Watch this to find out. First things first, BMW swears the G15 8 Series has nothing to do with the discontinued 6 Series Coupe and Convertible. This is not an extended 5 Series or a shortened 7 Series. This is a completely new project, says BMW, on 26 pages of the model launch press release. BMW explains models starting with 8 are the epitome of cutting-edge technology, luxury and sport performance. BMW emphasizes sport performance with the M8 GTE taking part in endurance racing. As far as luxury and new tech goes, we'll get to that in a moment. A word about the dimensions. The 8 series is slightly shorter, wider and lower than the 6 series, which makes it look more dynamic. In my opinion, visual similarities between the 6 series and the 8 series are apparent, but as far as I'm concerned, this car has nothing from the E31 8 series. Which is a shame, because that was a very interesting car. But that's for another episode. On the one hand, BMW keeps working on improving efficiency of its vehicles, and on the other hand, it's listening to the market. And so, the gills introduced in the 3 Series GT are now just for show. BMW explains, although there is no aerodynamic function to them anymore, the clients like them. Also, the vents behind the rear fenders are fake. And inside these cool exhaust tips, you can see regular pipes. Zeitgeist. The interior is also all about the Zeitgeist. You don't even need a key to enter. BMW issued me this NFC-enabled Samsung smartphone uh, because for now it only works with Samsung for some reason. But more phones will be supported in due time. First time round, so it works. Kinda. You'll also be able to authorize access to people you select at times you select. I see an application, for example, in the luxury car rental business, or when your driver has to pick up your car from the office and park it in your garage because the late night meeting also included a drink or two and you had to take a cab. Going back to the interior, I think this would look great in the BMW i8 a couple of years ago. It definitely looks modern with the fully configurable digital instrument cluster here. Then there is the center display with all new menus. And it just looks completely different from what we had in BMWs so far. More about the ups and downs of this live cockpit thing in my BMW X5 review, which you can watch by clicking here. Because this is my second BMW with the live cockpit, this is what the system is called, it's easier for me to find my way around, or at least I know what to look for in the menu. Finding it remains a challenge. I opened the car with a smartphone and I will use it to start the car as well. It just needs to go here on the induction charger where also the NFC sensor is, and that's it. BMW is trying to make you buy this car after 5 minutes test drive. The 850i comes to life with a pleasant growl. The steering is very direct and the acceleration pushes you into your seat. Even when you're in the Eco Pro mode, the cockpit cocoons you. All this makes you feel the unity between Wurst and Kartoffel Salad, as if they were rider and horse in a Mazda MX-5. So you drive back to the dealership and transfer the money faster than you can say purer Farspass, ja? You wait a couple of months, you take delivery of your 8 Series, which is beautiful. You drive out on the highway and something's off. Everything you felt during the test drive is 
diluted. The 8 series is still very comfortable, very fast, it sounds good. Oh yeah, it glides over minor bumps, but when it comes to steering, it's all digital trickery. All these cool semi-autonomous driving features, they take away driving precision, driving feel. At low speeds, the 8 series is very direct. Add the fast reaction to the gas pedal and there is enough adrenaline to close the sail. But at higher speeds, the steering is very twitchy and the car seems unstable. I tried turning off all the systems and it didn't help. Okay, so there was some crosswind, so that didn't help either, but come on, this is a Grand Tourer and it felt like, like a delivery van. But even nowadays, delivery vans have crosswind driving assist feature, so perhaps BMW should work on that as well, since there are so many other systems here. This is on the motorway. On ordinary roads it's much better, the 8 series cleverly masks the fact it weighs over 2 tons. This is the 850i, which means a bi-turbo 4.4 liter petrol V8 producing 530 horsepower. It takes only 3.7 seconds from 0 to 100 km per hour and pretty much at any speed the car is ready to lurch forward all the way until the electronically governed top speed of 250 km per hour or at least that's what they say because sometimes German manufacturers like to cheat and their cars are faster. In terms of performance, this 850i is close to the old M6. I understand BMW had to leave something for the M8, so the 850i is a bit like a game console. The gear change is not as mechanically violent as in an M car, and, well, the sound... It's like engineered. It's uncanny how responsive the engine is, regardless of the speed, regardless of the mode you're in. But the thing is, you don't feel there is any effort behind all this speed. And you may not realize when your talent ends and when the X-Drive can no longer help you. A few words about the driver aids. BMW 8 Series can be driven in semi-autonomous mode, which means the car will accelerate and slow down within a set speed limit and distance to the car in front. The car also reads road signs, so it can ask you to approve the new speed limit or it can adopt it automatically. The latter is too much even for the law-abiding Germans. There is also lane assist, you just have to keep your hands on the steering wheel, but again, steering is so light and artificial, the car often tells you to keep your hands on the wheel even though they are on the wheel, like in the Skoda Kodiak. The seats are a bit too hard for me, I'd like a bit more space for my right knee, but as far as the sort of jet fighter cockpit feeling is concerned, it's there. You definitely feel like a jet fighter pilot driving this thing. Now, I do appreciate, really I do, uh, that BMW left a physical dimmer, lights dimmer for the, for the cabin. Recently, I was driving a Toyota Yaris and uh, I couldn't find it. Well, I found it eventually, but it was in the least expected place. If you know where the Toyota Yaris has its cockpit lights dimmer, let me know in the comments below. And now back to the 8 series. Now, I'm sorry, but I will have to take this out on BMW. How can you not support Android Auto in, what is it, the end of the second decade of the 21st century? Come on! You gave me a freaking Android phone to open this car because iPhone, for some reason, doesn't work with it. But you don't give me Android Auto in your infotainment system? Come on! Now, as far as Apple CarPlay goes, it's finally standard on BMW cars and Minis, I think, as well. But early production models like this one 
don't get it so you'll have to go to the BMW whatever store on your iDrive and buy it from there or I don't know or maybe you'll get it you'll get it for free but it's not here yet either and there is no timeline for Android Auto adoption not cool when the starting price for this car is 100,000 euro I'm not going to adapt my lifestyle my phone just to your car and all your fake gills and air outlets and whatever they're not gonna change that zeitgeist guys zeitgeist So, what does the 8 Series compete against? Now, I wanted to do a comparison between this car and the Mercedes S-Class Coupe and the BMW guy told me, well, come on, we're more like Mercedes AMG GT which also implies this is more like a 911. Well, no, it's not. Perhaps M8 will be closer, but I doubt it'll be much lighter, so you're competing against the S-Class Coupe, Porky. That said, if I compare this to the 6 Series, 6 Series was definitely more like the Mercedes-Benz S-Class and the 8 Series handles much more sporty, even taking into account all this artificial steering. This is definitely more sporty than the old 6 Series. The rear bench is useless for adults, I may be just 175 centimeters tall, but I have no legroom or headroom. On the plus side, the rear seats can be folded, allowing you to carry more stuff when you take this car across the continent. In normal configuration, the boot volume is 420 liters and luggage space is long enough for my tripod. This means it's long enough for a small golf bag. BMW 8 Series prices start at €100,000 for an 840D. This 850i with options costs about €150,000. Over the years, BMW made some properly cool cars, like the E31 8 Series. However, in my opinion, the G15 8 Series is at best a prelude to something great that BMW will make us part of its number one next strategy. And how do you like the new coupe from BMW? Let me know in the comment section below, subscribe if you haven't, and join me for more reviews every Friday. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.